This video is by Mark Kingston from the ARA Institute of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand. Right, so this video here is on uh, this triangle here or this frame. It could be a uh, roof truss system. And you want to work out some uh, detail uh, that's missing. So this internal angle in this corner here is 42 degrees. The total height of the truss is 2.1 metres and the overall length across the base is 7.75 metres. What I want to know is this length down here, I want to know this length down here, and I want to know what this angle is here. So uh, the formulas that we're going to use, we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem, so uh, that states that uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and if we rewrite that formula, we get c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if we have uh, two short lengths, if we have a right angle triangle, uh, and we call this side b and this side, uh, sorry, this side a and this side b, and we have the information for those, we can determine what this side of here is. Um, so, and if we have, let's say that we have C in this case, and we don't have the A, that's a really rough job of rubbing it out, get myself organised. So if we had the long length and a short length, we can actually determine the other length by having rewriting the formula as, done it wrong again. So we want to determine what A is. A equals the square root of c squared minus b squared. So, uh, and you know, we could call, we could have a and be missing b on this side, and we would simply restate that formula as b equals the square root of c squared minus a squared. Doesn't really matter which side you call a, which side b, I've said that in previous videos. But given certain information, uh, we can determine other information uh, based on what we've got. So this truss here, we want to work out this angle and these two lengths. So the, the, the thing you need to do is break it into a couple of triangles. And these are going to be right angle triangles. So this is a symbol for a right angle triangle. So I'm going to redraw that triangle there. Got this triangle, right angle in the corner, going up here. It has a height here of 2.1 metres. So that's the 2.1 at that point there. And we have an angle here of 42 degrees. So we can, what we can do is we can determine this length here and we can actually also determine this length here. So the first thing we need to do is determine, uh, well we can determine this one or this one and what we're gonna use is trigonometry. Now you will remember uh, Sokatoa, so sine for the first one equals the opposite over the hypotenuse side. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent uh, is the opposite over adjacent. These are equals, of course, didn't write it. So what information have we got? Well, where the angle is, if you project out through the angle straight across to the other side, that is always the opposite side. So wherever the angle is, the side that is opposite the angle, it's called the opposite. Pretty straightforward. So what we'll do is we'll try and we'll determine this face here first. So this one here. So what we want, if this is the opposite side and the longer side is always the hypotenuse side on a triangle, so I'm going to try and determine the adjacent side. So what we need, we've got opposite and we want the adjacent. So we're going to come over here, we're going to use tan. So what it is going to be is we're going to write tan, 42 degrees, equals the opposite. Uh, I'll write it longhand for a start, over adjacent. Therefore tan, 42 degrees, equals 2.1 metres over the adjacent side. So what we want to do is isolate the uh, adjacent component, this here, on one side of the equal sign and get everything else over to the other side. So if I rewrite it again, I'm going to write tan 42 degrees, and I'm going to put that over 1. 
and then I'm going to write 2.1 over adjacent. Now, I'm just, I've just written this to try and explain this a bit better. 10 divided by 1 is still 10, uh, 42 degrees. So that's standard. So what we need to do to get the adjacent to the other side, we simply, um, these two points here cross over. So these go like this. You know, the one is going up to here. The adjacent is going up to here. So they simply cross over. So what's dividing on this side becomes a multiplier on the top line. So we would have 10, 42 degrees times the adjacent equals 2.1 times 1. Well, we know 2.1 times 1 is just 2.1. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, the adjacent on this side equals 2.1. This 10 figure is multiplying on this side. Once again, when we shift it to the other side, it becomes a dividing factor. So that arrow, if I draw that arrow there, doesn't matter which way they go, they still swap over. So when it goes to the other side, it becomes uh, 2.1 divided by um, 10.42. So on the calculator, uh, turn my phone on. And that's on, so here we go. We've got, uh, what did I say? 2.1 divided by 10.42 equals. So we get a figure here, the adjacent equals 2.33, 2.33. And that's gonna be meters because the figure we started out with is meters here. So this figure here, get rid of that with my Chuck's multi-cloth. That there is 2.33 meters. So we've used trigonometry because we've got one angle and one length and that has allowed us to determine another length. So now that we've done that, we've got the, uh, we've effectively got A and B in a right angle triangle. So I'm gonna say that the A is the 2.33 and the B is the 2.1, and now we can determine C with Pythagoras' theorem. So because we've got the two short lengths, the A and the B, we square those to give us the C. So it's gonna be the top formula. So sequencing on the calculator, I'm gonna push the square root button for a start. Excuse me. Uh, 2.33 squared plus 2.1 squared equals, and that gives us uh, 3 point, uh, we'll go to two decimal places, so 3.14. So that's 3.14 meters. So this up here is 3.14 meters. And we know that this distance from this point here to this point here is 2.33. So immediately we can work out what the distance is across this, this side of the triangle. So we've got uh, 7.75 minus 2.33, 2.33 equals, and that distance from that point there across to that point there is 5.42 meters. So we can now redraw the triangle that actually effectively sits in this portion here. So drawing it out, we know that it is 2.1 meters high, and we know that the length across the base at this point here is 5.42, and we're trying to determine this angle here. So uh, if we project out through our angle, that dictates that this side here is the opposite side, so opposite at that point, and the long one on a right angle triangle is always the hypotenuse. So we're going to use um, tan again because we've got the opposite and we've got the adjacent and we're looking for the angle. So I'm gonna rewrite that. Um, so in this case it's tan we don't know what that is, equals opposite over adjacent, therefore tan equals opposite is 
divided by 5.42. So on the calculator, we've got 2.1 divided by 5.42 equals, and then I'm pushing shift. Your calculator could say second, shift, or inverse, doesn't matter. Shift, 10 equals, and it's telling me there that it is 21.179. So this angle in here, draw an arrow into it, is 21 point, uh, what well they say, 179. So we'll just do it to two decimal places. So 18 degrees. So in here, get my Chuck's Mouldy Cloth again. We've got, uh, what they say, 21.18, 21.18 degrees. So, we have determined this length up the top side here, it's 3.14 metres. We've determined that the angle in here is 21.18 uh, degrees. And the last thing on that right angle triangle there, we want to know what effectively is actually the hypotenuse length across the space here. So we go back to Pythagoras' theorem again. We've got our two short lengths, we've got our 5.42, We've got our 2.1, so we're using, because it's the two short lengths, we add them together. So on the calculator, square root symbol for a start, we've got uh, 5.42 squared plus 2.1 squared equals, and that gives us 5.81. So the hypotenuse length along here, 5 point, sorry, was it 1 8 or 8 1? 8 1. 8 1 meters. So uh, that's how you can resolve a truss system if you're trying to work out your cut lengths for your steel. You want to go straight to the saw and start cutting the material up. You don't want to be drawing it out on the floor. A lot of people don't, uh, that can't do the maths will actually lay it out on the floor and then measure everything. It's very time consuming. Um, and it seems a bit cumbersome to me. So that's how you're going to resolve a truss system using Pythagoras' theorem over here and trigonometry over here. Just a bit of practice. There's a few questions online, and um, we'll keep bringing you back to it so you get some practice and start to gain some confidence with it because that's what it's all about. So we'll leave it there. Thank you.